On today's episode, we bring up some players that we are willing or not willing to forgive from last year's performance, and we jump into your questions in the mailbag. Make sure you subscribe. Don't miss a show all year long. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday edition. Sitting here at the end of February. Is this uh, is this one of them leap years? I haven't really looked at a calendar. I in believe a while. so. It is, so we get a bonus yeah. a bonus day. Yeah, the 29th. That means it that's one is a leap year. It's one more day before I have to have my own birthday. Right? Oh, uh, yeah. Which like, birthday? Uh, the one after 39. <laughs> yes, join us. So I get an, <laughs> yes. extra, an extra one day. One of us. One, one of us. us. Yes. You know. What a loser. When you guys were going through, you know, your aging, um, you know, it was easy to make fun of you because you're older. You yeah. Know, old, really. And all the while, I'm thinking, you know, when I get there, What's the big deal? Yeah. I'm not feeling that way anymore. Oh, no. Yeah. You're not looking feel- it he down. He can smell it. <laughs> he can taste it. <laughs> oh, feel like yeah, baby. I'm, I'm getting out. I mean, it's like the time now where I, people are looking at me a little different. They know. Like, oh, yeah. The, just the people on the street, they know something's coming. Mm-hmm. Like, that guy mm-hmm. is so A lot close. of people are just ignoring you. Yeah. It's, they don't even, it's like you, you just don't even exist. If different magazines coming in the mail for different things, you know? <laughs> medical, medical devices, you know? <laughs> Um, but now that I know that it's a leap year, I get an extra day to, to, to wait, to put it off. Man. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that, there's not a chance they add like another 365 to the end of February. I'll look into it. Thank you. That'd be helpful. Um, welcome in. We've got a, a fun show today. I, we're going to get to the quick question, which is a question about forgiveness. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to forgive Mike for his pick. In that segment, uh, really? what, the one that oh, we yeah. haven't done yet. Yeah, in the segment you haven't done. It's a, it's a tease. I just that's I'm, fine. I'm not going to forgive you that's for fine. who you're going to forgive. That's fine. Just saying. Uh, UltimateDraftKit.com. Head over there. Order by March first. Get a chance to win a listener league spot. Tell you what, Leap Year has done for oh, the people. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. He wants people out of that UDK. Go on, Mike. No, no, he wants. I want them into the UDK. Oh, all right. And the uh, the the slackers, the people who are putting things off. I'll do it tomorrow. Well, you get one extra day. You get one extra day to get into the UDK before March first. Because if you do, you could win a spot in our listener league. But you got to get in before March first, and then of course you get all the goodness of the UDK when it releases, or the greatness of the Dynasty Pass right now. UltimateDraftKit.com. Thank you, Mike. That was uh, solid. I shouldn't have doubted you. Uh, I just, you just you saw my name, and you're just all hot and bothered and mad. You know, I was a little distracted because I saw that like there's this news that broke about Amazon Prime Video, where we've seen Amazon hosting several uh, Thursday night football games. That's where the home of Thursday might night say football. All was. of them. Yeah, <laughs> you might. So several, <laughs> probably like eighteen or okay. seventeen. Yeah, I mean, I, d- I didn't know for sure. Um, they didn't host Thanksgiving, did they? Yeah, they did. They had a Thanksgiving game. Right. Oh <laughs> man, that backfired. <laughs> <laughs> they really said that with a with a punch. Um, but they they're they're going to host their first NFL playoff game after the twenty twenty four season next year, and it costs it. Co- I see. I thought maybe we could host one. I would, you know what I mean? Based on okay. what it costs, Let I'm check, going to back out. I'm going to check my wallet. I think I got a couple Twinskis in there. So I can chip in. It's going to be $120 million. Oh! I don't know if we could go fund me that. I don't know if the Foot Clan can come up with $120 million. Uh, but Amazon's going to do it. That's a lot so of quiche. The streaming, the streaming continues. One game, huh? Just one game. Oh, man. Wow. Imagine... Man. 
Imagine spinning it on a game, and you know you don't. I mean, you don't know who's playing, right? Correct. You're not out there. There's not like a uh, an eBay of these games where they're like, "Oh, the Chiefs Eagles matchup this year." It doesn't matter. It does not matter. It's a but you got to be game. rooting for something, of course. But every single playoff game gets massive viewership. They're gonna make money on this 120 million dollar deal with the ad revenue. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Apparently, that uh, they passed last year, and that's why Peacock got the playoff game. Which was behind a paywall. Yeah. Which well, I guess Prime, Prime is, is on a paywall. Yeah. So uh, Mr. Bezos said, oh, not not this time. Watch this. Yeah. It is funny because I don't consider Prime behind a paywall. It, it, I un- yeah, I because the entire the satur- world the has Amazon Prime, it feels like. Yeah, if you get to a certain point, like where a certain percentage of people all have it, it doesn't feel like it's behind a paywall. Right. But there are people that don't have Prime, right? Of course. Yeah, there's got to be. Okay. That's true. That's I mean, why I didn't make that assumption. If everyone has it, why would you advertise ever? That's fair. There's yeah. still new people out there. They all will by this playoff game. All right. Uh, follow us on X at the FF Ballers. Here's your quick question. Maybe I can find some forgiveness for Mike within it. The question is, who is a player you are willing to forgive in 2024? So somebody that did something last year, they had a performance that you were, look, it wasn't great. It was a bad time. Maybe it let you down because you talked all about them. Well, I'll, I'll hop in here just to make us wait longer for Mike's uh, <laughs> unforgivable, <laughs> unforgivable take, take okay. according to Andy. Um, for me, it's Ramondre Stevenson. I mean, a terrible year. Just really, really, really disappointing. Um, if you drafted him, you got off to a, a bad start. Those first five weeks were just he was meh or bad the first month plus of the season. The end of the season, if you had traded for him, um, as as I did in one of our leagues, well, he didn't play. He missed the last month of the season with injury. I don't believe he would have necessarily missed the, the – the, the Patriots at that point had kind of turned it in, folded up shop, uh, shut down early because they were going for that top draft pick by that point in time. But I don't think it was as bad as it felt. In the middle of the season, even with a terrible, terrible, awful Patriots team and an offense that was completely inept, he had a six-game stretch there where it was like the guy that you were hopeful in coming into the season, uh, you know, on pace for 1,500 all-purpose yards, 70 receptions. Uh, and he is in the last year of his rookie deal, so he's – He's a done deal. He's going to be their main starting running back. I don't believe they will go and this season aim to usurp him. They might add to him because obviously Ezekiel Elliott now is a free agent. I doubt they bring him back. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But, he, you know, he was there when Ramondre was still good. And you've got Alex Van Pelt coming in, their new offensive coordinator coming over from Cleveland. A good, uh, very running back friendly scheme. So I, I, I think... I- I think Ramondre's fine. So you forgive him? I forgive him. I, he, players have bad seasons. Players deal with injuries. He was not bad. He was in a bad situation. I think it would be good if we each said whether we would also forgive the player you bring up. And, you know, this was a dumpster fire of a team. The one thing I'll say is there will be a variable of, like, you know, new head coach, right, Jared uh, Mayo. Mayo. And, you know, sometimes you have favorites and stuff like that. Yeah, but Ramondre said he wants to be the bell cow. His situation last year felt like you were like, ah, oh, Michael Carter's going to take some carries from Brees Hall, like we, we said like a couple years ago. That didn't happen. And then this one was like, ah, oh, Zeke could take some carries from Ramondre, and it kind of happened. A little bit, but it did. But didn't. I'll forgive him. You will. I, I you will, will forgive, forgive Ramondre Stevenson. Mike, do you Mike? forgive him? Yeah. Oh, I do. He's, okay. he's, he he can show out as a pass catcher. I mean, uh, the when he was given the opportunity, he came through for you, and it's just the, the team – was so bad last year. Uh, all right, all right, Mike. No, no, no. We're, no, saving, no. we're saving. You it. Got, I was right. gonna say. I was gonna say. Hold it, because Andy, you're up. Garrett Wilson is the player that yeah. I will forgive from 2024. Mm. He had the the best worst <laughs> season. <clears throat> Jason's face well, is a I little just, perplexed. I realized I don't forgive Andy for this take. Oh, oh, get bodied. It's too easy. Oh, who isn't forgiving Garrett Wilson 
I'm not even mad at him. Here, here's why. Who's mad at Garrett Wilson? <laughs> yeah. I'll hey, apparently Andy. I'll tell you who's mad at them. <laughs> uh, Garrett Wilson is everybody that drafted him in the second round last year and got this performance. Or like every he played 18 games and you won none of your weeks because of him. If he was on a winning week for fantasy, it was incidental. It was an accident. It was you saying, oh, maybe this will be a week where he gets a bunch of targets. Oh, he did, but it didn't matter. He got a bunch of targets. He had 168 targets, and it didn't matter. It, it's kind of the wide receiver situation that uh, we talked about with Sam Howell throwing the ball more than everybody in all of football, and it didn't help them have a running back or a wide out do anything. They chucked it Garrett's way. A lot. And it didn't matter. I mean, uh, 11 yards per catch, three touchdowns. And it felt like a player that, like, was wearing, like, put, trying to put the whole team on his back all year, but couldn't do it. Like, sometimes you just can't. Not everyone's Greg Jennings. It's like you're playing tug of war, and it's just you versus the rest of the NFL on the other side. And he was pulling as hard as he could pull. I can tell you who has forgiven. Garrett Wilson. Yeah, Andy, who is that? The best ball community. <laughs> All of them. Because last year, the excitement for Garrett Wilson was at a fever pitch uh, when he was the wide receiver 10. Currently in best ball, the wide receiver 8. The upside for Garrett Wilson is unbelievable. Yes, great it's, player. It, it, if you took this season where Garrett Wilson was a disappointment, he was 95 for 1,000. If he had 10 touchdowns this year, he's got a great year. And so I think some people see the upside and they say, look, I'm going to I'm gonna pay up for Garrett Wilson's upside with Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. I drafted him at the 1-2 turn in my most recent best How'd you, wow. how'd you, how'd you feel about it? I didn't and feel – And why don't you forgive me? Oh, because you said it's too easy. Yeah, yeah. It's so just, you forgive him as well. Yeah, I don't, well, kind of like Mike said, I, I have nothing to forgive. If you drafted him <laughs> in that spot that you just talked about where he went in best ball, you're coming back and taking them at eight this year? Yeah. I think people, a lot of people, people aren't. Well, the average people are. <laughs> no, but, but the average people, You're saying 11 out of 12 didn't take them last year. Yeah, I I mean, I will say that in our main league of record, the, the, you know, the one we care about the most, I didn't experience the heartbreak and the frustration of having him. Mike had so, him for a while, and he has him in Dynasty. Yes, I, did, I had him in Dynasty, which at the end of the year was – truly a delight of like do i actually play garrett wilson in the playoffs that was a great oh, decision as in it was terrible it was the worst you couldn't decide whether you wanted to play the yeah wide receiver 59 43 30 67 yep. 43 yep that's that's the one all right so you both forgive him and yep. I, I, apparently i took too easy of a route it's he's, okay he's I, for, I forgive you I, now can i, I can, can i have you. a bonus real quick yeah, i want yeah, to yeah, explain sure. little mini bonus patrick mahomes okay okay will you forgive patrick mahomes yeah, yeah, I forgive. But by Patrick forgiving this, that mean you, you'll then look at him to be the QB, a top three quarterback no, next year. No, if that's what Ooh, forgiving then means, you don't. then I don't forgive him. You don't. Yeah, I don't either then. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Glad I went with Wilson. All right, Mike. All right. All right. It is a player who I still think can be good, so I will forgive him because last year was a total disaster. It was Tony Pollard of the Dallas Cowboys. The excitement. Yeah, like people were so pumped for Tony Pollard. Zeke is gone. His efficiency metrics have been off the charts, and it was awful. It was truly, truly awful uh, for where you drafted him. Converted just three of his 16 carries inside the five-yard line. He's going to be a free agent, almost 27. But why I'm willing to forgive Tony Pollard is a couple things have come out now where a uh, good friend of the show, Matt Harmon, like actually talked to Tony Pollard and, and was talking about the injury because lost to time is Tony Pollard was coming off of a devastating injury. And unfortunately, because we look at, we look at football players as, as these are modern day superheroes, gladiators, impervious to pain. These guys play through things that I can't even imagine uh, going to work. Yeah. With with this, and they're out there having three hundred pound men try to destroy them, and you just you forget that Tony Pollard was hurt, and and so Harmon was talking to him and said, you know, when did you actually finally feel all right? And he said, the Carolina game, which was week eleven, 
And then on Twitter, Andrew Erickson from Fantasy Pros, he pointed out, and I went and I vetted this, said, you know, he he echoed what Harmon had said of, of Tony Pollard, said he didn't feel great until week 11. Pro Football Focus, their highest graded runner from week 11 till the end of the season was Tony Pollard. So this didn't turn into huge fantasy points. And look, I'm not going to get into the PFF discussion about grading, but just the point being the people watching Pollard's tape said, no, this guy is back. From week 11, he was the running back 15 on. It wasn't like world-changing or draft-saving production, but in that time period, points per game, he's right along the lines of of David Montgomery, Travis Etienne, Devin Singletary, who went on his heater. Like Those were the guys he was around in points per game. So the point being, I'm willing to forgive if he ends up in an, in a another great situation this much further away from the injury recovery. I think that there is still something left for Tony Pollard. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna boost him up to being, you know, what we hoped for last year, but I think he has something to offer. Now there's there's a follow up question here uh, that from Tony P okay. on YouTube. Okay. Is it crazy to trade away Tony Pollard? For Kendra Miller and the two hundred one. So, do you, okay. what's your level of forgiveness here? Obviously, Pollard's a free agent. We don't yeah. know where he's going to go. Dynast, Dynasty is so different because twenty seven years old is like that's when I'm I'm looking to get rid of players at least a year too early. I mean, that's a a wild swing for Kendra Miller, who will be he should be a backup at least for this year. Maybe he takes over for Alvin Kamara. It like, doesn't seem like it, it. It's Yeah, it's not likely. It's in the range of outcomes. It's something that could happen in the 201. I don't think it's crazy. You would be really trying to get out in front of something. But uh, so, yeah, I think I, I might do it. I might do that. Do you forgive Tony Pollard, Jason? It was a, it was a compelling case. And given the incoming um, ru rookie running backs, I think that the free agents this year will have an easier time than last year. So. I'm will I'm willing to forgive him. I, now, what that means is he needs to go to a good home. He needs to get a contract. You go out and get a contract. I forgive you. Yeah, and I don't know how he'll do that exactly. I have a policy in my life. I don't forgive people that have been dowdled. Mm, you know what yeah, I mean? It's just yeah. a it's just a family rule, right? Yeah. If I if someone has dowdled me. That's, you know what yeah. I mean? Oh, yeah, that's, that's bad. That's dangerous. That is very yeah, dangerous. That is a dangerous yeah. thing. You don't want to be Rico. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, Rico, yeah, you don't want to get Rico laws either. Right. Tony Pollard was so hurt that the team did nothing in the offseason and, and handed him the ball a billion times for the first 11 weeks. I understand he was better in the second half, but let's not forget the narrative street, the reality of why we liked Dak and CeeDee that time of year. The schedule was, was nice, and, and the team – played well and he still yes. couldn't get into the end zone except for one time in that entire stretch of games well no, no not in the second half yeah in the second half he scored one rushing touchdown right no in the second half is, oh okay the I, second I was, half from week 11 on is where actually four, four of, four. Four yeah. of his right. six rushing touchdowns happened yeah like and the, the the numbers honestly for him weren't like outrageously better the reason i won't forget but they, were, him, they though, were better is because he's going to switch teams he's getting older and last season's situation should have been pinnacle opportunity for him. So what if trust? He, how can I forgive and trust? What if he's a back with the Cowboys? If he's back with the Cowboys, that would be, I guess, the best scenario. But if he's back with the Cowboys, do you forgive no. him? No. Okay. <laughs> no, no, because I, I, he was, he was in the top three most detrimental fantasy selections that you can make, and I don't have a reason to forgive him. Yeah, you know what I mean. Fair. Like I need, we need Garrett Wilson to deliver, right? Yeah, yeah and you have a reason with Aaron Rodgers not being like maybe hurt, maybe not hurt. He was gone. I can't imagine everything else in the Cowboys stayed the same, right? The same head coach and an offensive situation, other than defensive coordinator. So this is a this is a coach that has like they're like I I'm gonna doubt all down at the goal line. Yep. You know what I mean? No, so, I, I, so he's probably going to be like, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something else. And I think that a lot of the community will feel the same way. So and that's why you're going to be in. That's this is I may scoop up. This is really interesting because I I find myself right on the right on the border of forgiveness. Or did, did the doubt comment make any? It put some doubts in my mind. Oh, um, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh. baby, Boston. Uh, I want to I want to pull Deuce's uh, alley would, on Paul. Jason, Jason. 
Yeah, uh, give it to I me. had a note here. Mm-hmm. I remember it. Yeah, you you made fun of my jokes. Yeah, because it then, was bad. And I, bad. Made a, I made a note uh-huh. to point out your jokes yeah, yeah, yeah. to you. Give it to me. You just made a dowdle into a doubt old joke. Yeah, baby! Okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah! Oh, baby, the people love it. I'm just checking in. Just che- I'll, I'll check in from time Thank to time. You. Thank you for checking in. See uh, how you feel about them. I want to check in with Deucer's Alley. <laughs> and that's when their podcast <laughs> began to decline. <laughs> on the uh, on the Pollard forgiveness or unforgiveness. Who are you checking on? With Deucer's Alley. I want to check with the producers because right now they are the people that I could talk to. So, what, you want to Forgiveness? Re- or unforgiveness on Tony Pollard based on these conversations. We'll start with Al. I'm not ready to forgive. Okay. Mm, okay, unforgiveness. Okay. okay. A hard man. I know Brooks. I know Brooks. He's, Brooksy? He's, I'll forgive I'm, him. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. He's got, all right. he's got so, hope and love. So the Rap Scallion's heart. breaking the tie here. Oh, crap. I'm with Al. I'm not going to yeah, forgive all him. All right, yeah. there you go. And also, Mike's joke was better. Oh, get wrecked. Oh, get man. it. Get wrecked. <laughs> And Jason, he's out the, and Jason, Jason is out the seat. Jason he has unplugged his headphones. He's like, oh, someone called the police. Jason. Wow. Jason is giving him the business. Wow. Um, Sorry, Jay. It's true. Hey, wow. dude, you don't have you don't have to apologize to nobody. Uh, people on YouTube, <laughs> come rescue me, okay? All right, tell the truth. Uh, well, it seems you know what it seems like a good time for a break. <laughs> let's take let's take a break and talk some news. Did you uh you get a chance to kind of settle down, Jay? Yeah. I had this show's about forgiveness. Yeah. Rap Scally and I forgive you. There you go. <laughs> news and notes from around the league. Well, We've got an update from Baltimore. Yeah, uh, always the best news to talk about. ESPN's Jameson Hin- Hinsley reports the Baltimore County Police are suspending a domestic assault investigation into Zay Flowers without charges. The NFL is still monitoring the situation. They have every the NFL has the right to do their own yes. investigation. Yeah, that that's always the takeaway here is yes, the actual legalities are done. But if the NFL looks into things more and they say you have besmirched the shield, they can, they have the right to step in. Jordan Schultz from Bleacher Report talking about Mike Evans and the Buccaneers, that they are still far, far apart on a contract extension. Uh, I saw some additional context on this that uh, kind of dismissed the, the idea of them being without hope to reach an agreement. They, they seem to think it was still possible – but uh, we'll find out if Mike Evans returns or if he will find a new home. He is uh, officially fantasy football's favorite player to Photoshop into other jerseys this offseason, I feel like, because everyone's like, oh, Lamar and Mahomes and Josh Allen. What if they had this guy? So It, it would be good for them. Uh, and then we have a report that uh, Deshaun Watson, on track in his rehab schedule, will begin throwing in March. So, so not ahead of schedule. Mm. On track. Mm. That's on bad. Track. a bad sign. Yeah, that's bad. Is news. on track behind schedule? On track is definitely behind schedule. Mm-hmm. The only way you're on schedule anymore is to be yeah. ahead of it. <laughs> yes, to be on time. To be early is to be on time. So that's a bad report. That's that's how I'm choosing to read it. Now March is is uh, well, that's quite a bit earlier in the season though. So Man. I think he'll be all right. Justin Fields. Oh, this is fun. We always like watching this. This is where we're at. Welcome to uh, well, February. This is the welcome to the future. It really is. I mean, there's something to be said. It doesn't mean it always leads somewhere, but let, let me get to it. It does. It all always leads to stupidity. I'm going to unfollow you for that. Justin Fields has unfollowed the Bears on Instagram. Oh, no. And what has followed... Apparently, guys, he wants to play with Kyle Pitts, Drake London, and B. John Robinson. Uh, um, uh, you notice they didn't report a quarterback he followed because he wants to be their quarterback. I say well, let's get let's get the deal done. I, I think this makes sense for all parties, and I would love it for. I think for pretty much all parties, not Pitts. Nah, I would like it for London. It, it, this DJ is one, Moore was this fine. This is one of those relative situations, right? 
relative to what they have, yes. Yeah. That's all we can go with, I guess. Yeah, if we But can, I mean, if if Justin Fields is a he's a running quarterback, if we can turn Drake London into a top 20, uh, 24 wide receiver, then then I'll be happy. Yeah, you're right. I mean, DJ Moore is the um what was Kyle what was example. He? Wide, or, or He's wide, wide receiver, receiver six. Six, yeah. I mean, it was boosted by some real spike games, but those. All right, those, I'm in. I'm in. It's, yeah, it it's wouldn't... better than nothing. <laughs> it's better than nothing, and it's better than where things are going. They really had nothing last year. So, yeah, we'll find out if, uh, you know, it, did Justin Fields have a conversation with someone in Chicago and, and they disclosed he's and probably not going to be there? Did Who monitors social oh. media this close? Is Are there bots that just alert teams of people when follows and unfollows happen within NFL players like it they, always blows are, my mind there like, are bots they are called interns yeah <laughs> yeah I mean it's gonna say it's called reddit they think those they, are the bots you think yeah. the redditors aren't on top of this it it is you know it's hard because this is the time of year when everyone's getting interviewed so you don't know if like Justin Field responded to Justin Fields responded to like you know, did somebody from the Bears say something in the media that made it seem like they weren't interested in him? Is it, uh, you know, you, you saw an interview with DJ Moore. DJ Moore wants him back. Maybe the Bears account just sucks. Mm, Have like, we thought about a, this? This is oh, like a good bad follow. content. So yeah. It's like, a bad follow. He's like, I my follows are worth a lot, and I'm not going to waste my time, Bears social media. Get it together. There was a time last offseason that Kyler Murray didn't have a lot of Cardinals on his social media. Do you remember? Yes. Yep. Who does he play for? The Arizona Cardinals. All right, that'll do it for the news and notes today. Let's jump into the mailbag. 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 All right, lots of questions from the people. If you have one yourself, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Let's start with the voicemail. Hey, ballers. Commissioner here. I wanted to ask about the IR spot. Why not just add another roster spot? All I hear you guys do is complain about how the IR spot isn't that great, especially because they don't designate people out on time. So why not just add the other spot? I'm not saying you're wrong. I just want to hear the other side. Thank you. I mean, I, I think people, you can add as many bench spots as you want. People will still ask for an IR spot because, mm-hmm. If you add another bench spot, that is uh, 12 times 3, right, 36 additional players that would be available on the free agent pool, that won't be because you don't leave a spot blank and you're not waiting for an injury. So you go out there and, and you will have 36 additional players taken away from you know teams that need to pivot and, and sign somebody. I like a bench size that forces managers to have an, you know, they'll have enough room to hold some players, but not so much room that they don't have to make tough decisions. And, and, and not so many players that the waiver wire's bare and boring. And you don't have – you want to fight on the waiver wire, yes. right? You want to, like, have that competition every time that the waiver day comes around where it's like, who got this guy? If You know, otherwise it's a dynasty league where, you know, or that feel where waivers are, you know, they're That's a lot of players. Mess. 36 additional players that, yeah. you know, you want people to be – making choices about who they're playing that week and letting guys go into the free agent pool that might be nice holds because then other people can speculate. A lot of speculation on the waiver wire is fun and entertaining. Yeah, and to speak to the complaining about IR, that is for fun and entertainment. <laughs> I mean, I, no, I, I like, appreciate it, Jason. Thank you. It's, it's just the truth. We complain about a lot of stuff in fantasy that grinds our gears. If we fix it. What are we going to complain we have about? Nothing to talk. We'll about. We'll find something else to complain about. But it's it's like a sign of respect and love that we're so frustrated that this guy's not marked out yet. It's fun. That's why yeah. we mostly choose things that can't be changed to complain about. Mm. Right. Because yep. because we kind of we want to back ourselves into a nice corner there. Mm -hmm. And the while one of us you when you have the player on the IR, you are the one who is complaining. The other people are enjoying it so much. Oh, it's a lot of fun. When when I know that my opponent is now hamstrung because of the player who's in the IR and they can't make a move, I bring it, I'm happy about it. Every it's morning fun. that Mike posts, why won't they take this guy <laughs> yeah. out yeah. off the IR? He's complaining. I'm going. <laughs> yeah, you're grabbing the popcorn bucket, sitting back, having a good time. I hope they take longer <laughs> to move his, his 
Yeah. So it's um yeah, just, it's just part of the game. Yeah. Just not the Dune popcorn. All right, we have a couple of Oh man. Move it along. We have a couple of Brees Hall questions. Let's go toss that right in there. Move it along. Uh <laughs> Cena says Brees Hall or Jamar Chase in a one keeper league. Is one keeper league. Okay, so this is Ooh. basically redraft. I will shock you to say I think it's pretty darn close. Oh, I, I, I think it is exceptionally close. I will, if this was a startup, I'm gonna take Chase over Brees. No, this is just a just a redraft. No, no, no. But it, yeah, oh. that's what I'm. Or yes, I said startup as in dynasty. But I, I, I meant just basically redraft. That's okay. that's how I'm viewing it. If just a normal draft, I would take Chase ahead of him. So me too. It, it's close, but. That's how I lean. That's really tough. I really, really like Brees Hall this year. It, it, like, bo like, yes. like running back two. Yeah, Brees Hall can be. And this just is just like I've always this, said. This is the game. One of, of my guys. If everything, <laughs> if everything goes right, of course. But it's if Aaron Rodgers is healthy and they, like, they make any sort of adjustments, improvements to the offensive line. Brees Hall can be a. Uh, like an almost CMC level impact to your to your fantasy lineup because he catches so many passes. You can have two players in one spot. I think I would gamble. I think I'd gamble with Brees Hall. How could they not improve that offensive I would, line? Because sometimes like if they literally J -T -S, <laughs> Jets, Jets, Jets. They, they didn't got, improve it this year. If they got rid of – like if they played with four, it's got to be better. It's got to be there. I just don't know how it could be as bad as what they were last year. Honestly, the fact that things go wrong for the Jets factors into the tie for me. But yeah. you're just betting on history. I'm just betting on history. Yeah. Uh, the follow up question is Brees Hall, the new dynasty RB one. If not, then who? Uh, he is not for me. It's Bijan for me. It's Bijan for me. I have Jameer Gibbs at one. Ooh, spicy. Yeah, Jameer Gibbs is number two for me. But I, I mean, I look, I. If you could program them to scramble every day, that's fine too. I mean, all those guys are right in the mix. So, Brees is a great one. Um, there is an article uh, exclusive to the Dynasty Pass right yes. now. It's a great article. Great article. Uh, it's called The Dynasty Life Cycle of Running Backs. Yeah, Big Marv put that. He's done tremendous work for us for years. And we said, let's get some uh, let's get some exclusive stuff in the, into the Dino Pass, man. And he said, yeah. You want to talk about life cycles of running backs? We said, yeah. And he did. And the other positions will be coming out uh, as well. All right. Uh, Instagram question. Trading draft picks and redraft. Yes. Yay or nay? Sorry, Mike. That is not one of the answers oh. he would like. Oh, yeah. Yay. Uh, yay. Yay. Okay. Whee! Whee! <laughs> I thought, well, yeah. All right. I know where we're going. We need a drop that's like Mike <laughs> analyzes the English language. Begin. What? Why would? Why were we doing that? Why? Like when you vote, yeah, I want yay or nay, and it's like, here's but here's the bigger problem. One is silly because yay is now a word that means like yay, fun, like fun, yeah. but they rhyme. Know what I mean? Right. Yes it's, and it's, no. It's yeah. the same vowel sound, and they're yes and no. There, you are not mixing those up. You could get yay or nay. Hey, was was that a yay it's, or was that a nay? Hey. It's I, a little easier to be loud with the word yay. Yeah, you can't be. Very you can't loud be as with loud yes. with yes. But okay. you can really. Are you cool with that as I an do. answer? So I, I accept that. The answer. So they both come from the old English. Yeah, uh, but old busted English. But it does appear that the reason that you vote with yay or nay is. Because it rhymes and it sounds great when you. It put, does. They sound wanted great. that. Yeah. They want. They I want, want the, the confusion. They want to. They want to be able to say yay or nay. That just it flows, you know. <laughs> and then at the end they go the, the. These are the decision makers. The yays have it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, as opposed to the yeses. Yeah, the yeses have the it. Yeses have terrible. it. Yeah, Mike. Come on. Sorry. Grow oh. up, Mike. Old English wins again. <laughs> the vote passes. I mean, what's wrong with that? What it's, you know what? It doesn't rhyme. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. All right, Instagram question. Hey. Um, Sam wants to know what our favorite type of league to play in is, redraft, keeper, or dynasty. Uh, I am in the keeper camp. I am in the keeper camp as well. 
I am a keeper as well. Which yeah, is it, ironic because I think it is the least. It's the minority of those three. Common. Yeah. It's it's easier to find a redraft league and easier to find a dynasty league. Keepers, though, are to me the absolute chef's kiss of a combination where you get year-round play, you get off-season magic, and yet the waiver wire, the draft day is... Yeah, you preserve the draft, but it, you still have players. Yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, part of that might be because keeper formats are all over the map. Some people keep one or three or five. Yeah, there's not like a universal sign up for a keeper league and everyone's playing the same format. Maybe like our league of record format should be called what a, like a keeper league is. Like that can just become the Coca-Cola of formats. We should just talk to Sleeper and be like, hey, make our league the, the default? default keeper league. Well, I vote yay. Yay. Okay. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> All right, quick break. At least break. it rhymed. Another quick break. Back with some more questions. This question comes from YouTube. Kyle Reader wants to know, is Javante Williams going to get back into the conversation of RB1 territory after a year of recovery, or did McLaughlin do enough to split that backfield? Uh, Javante Williams is entering the final year of his rookie contract. He is uh, not yet 24 years old. He had three rushing touchdowns on 217 attempts. Most people think Russell Wilson will be gone. Uh, I am part of most people, but I will say no, I don't think so. So you're not going to forgive Javante Williams? No. I, I, You know, I don't feel like he's in need of forgiveness necessarily because he's never done it. I mean, he's had spurts and games in the past, then he got injured. I'm not, you know, you don't have to forgive a guy for getting hurt, and then he didn't deliver this year, but that's not a I, – I need to forgive players that have a standard they've set and then they don't, they don't meet it. Okay. And to me – Javante just didn't look good. I no, mean, to he, me, he just didn't look that good. He it, looked fine. I don't think he looked fine. I think he looked pretty poor. Um, the question is going to be, obviously, he he came back and surprised everyone with his timeline for getting back from a horrific knee injury. It wasn't a straight ACL. It was one that you just did not think he'd be able to get back in time for the start of the season. We assumed he'd start on the pup and then get back slowly, maybe by the end of the season, start showing up. Instead... He got out week one. He got out to preseason games and played in the preseason, uh, shocking the fantasy world. And I think maybe that makes us forget that that usual timeline on recovery from that injury, you know, is really the next year where you come back to form. And there is a world that exists where he is back to his old self. I think because of the contract situation and the draft capital um and, and the roster needs of the Broncos there is a good chance Javante enters the season with a similar depth chart and gets a lot of opportunity and he's so he's like we'll, Romandre right same year yeah yeah so it, it's one of those where you get to see was it the injury or did he not was he not that dude and it last it's so hard to watch how he played last year and say, well, it's going to totally change. It was all the injury. He's going to be great this year. Very difficult to have that, but I do think it's worth the intellectual exercise of remembering that specific injury and the normal expectations for it. This isn't revisionist history or, you know, after the season finding out that, oh, he was he was hurt more than we thought. This was like – we. Well, we knew he was supposed to be bad this year. Yeah, it he, just he was. He's going to have wide range of outcomes because yep. McLaughlin is a player that the current regime opted for, right? Like, sure. Go ahead, Mike. So the what's what's hard about evaluating Javante is like we have Brees Hall, okay? Brees Hall tore his uh, ACL. He comes back. I can't recall. I, I think Brees is it might have been a relatively easier injury to come back for. But Brees Hall was not himself over the the first half of the season or so. But eventually you started to – and he – like inefficiency on the ground. But eventually you saw, oh, yeah, like I can see – Vintage. It. I can see Brees Hall. I can see the, the guy that we all fell in love with. And Javante, to me, just never had that game at any point in the season where I said, oh, there's – that's Javante. That's the guy who was drafted in the second round. 
So I mean, I was regularly impressed by McLaughlin. Oh yeah, yeah, Jerry, yeah, he's, yeah. All the, I mean, he was lined with uh, more electric. Yes, yeah, and that's so the, the fact that we didn't see it. That's where it becomes so hard to the RB one range. It, it won't be talked about it like that, but I will leave the window cracked because I thought he was such an outstanding prospect. And was so excited that there is a chance, and of course the the Sean Payton history with running backs has it's been good to fantasy football players, so a chance, but highly skeptical as we you saw nothing. And, and McLaughlin, he he looked really really good, but the the team did not give him that much work. I think he, he made some plays that caught your eye, but the team still gave the majority of work, the vast majority of work to the underperforming. Javante. So, would it surprise you that Samaje P. Ryan somehow had 50 catches for 455 yards in the passing game? Yeah, it does surprise that me. That shocks me. Feels like he was deleted from the roster yeah, at some point like in the 50, season. Yeah, there was like 50, felt like 50 empty catches. But I guess that team didn't feel too good overall until that run. Um, all right, let's move on here. Instagram question from Zach. In a new dynasty startup, is it worth it to draft CMC first overall? No. Probably not, but close. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, if a dynasty when, startup. When you have Bijan and Brees at the ages that they're at with the potential, like there's no guarantee that they don't beat McCaffrey this year. Yeah, there, there is you a, would guarantee need a guarantee that they have a longer career yes, from would, this point. If McCaffrey was guaranteed to be the number one relative to the talent out there beyond him, I think to me, it's not a matter of being like, la or... was it worth it last year? If if last year McCaffrey was number one pick in a dynasty startup, would you say you made the right pick? I, I mean, would, I, I, would I would still say, say no. no, but not because of Bijan and Brees, but because of the other top tier wide receivers. Mm -hmm. I I would much rather like if I'm. Oh, starting, I was only thinking running backs. Yeah, yeah I was only if, if I'm starting a a new dynasty startup yeah, and I can yeah. get my hands on a Justin Jefferson, a Jamar Chase, a CeeDee Lamb. So let's change the question, because I, I, I meant it just in respect to the other running backs. Okay. Only as, as the RB1 overall, the number one pick in a dynasty startup at running back. Yeah, would have been worth it Last year, would it have been year. worth it to take him over Bijan or Brees Hall? For sure. The year that you got Because you're going to get three full years, right? Like You're going to get Maybe. the year you just got, and then this upcoming year, and probably another full year. Yeah, you, so you're including last year yes, as the three. Yeah. yeah, so I, I say at that point you would have gotten three. Is that enough? Yeah, that's enough. I mean, he what did he score, 20 straight games? I mean, right now CMC is still already a top five uh, dynasty running back. And, He's at and two so if you were to, able to get him last two. year. He is at two for me. Wow. Right? I know you both probably have Brees and Bijan ahead of him. Yeah. yeah, and Gibbs. I do have Gibbs ahead. It's just the – I think you have this year, but – I mean, run the uh, running backs just it. Some some special outlier running backs happen, and maybe he is that for longevity. But I wouldn't bet the start of my dynasty team of of running backs against that of of that third year. The third year could happen where I feel quite confident in all those other guys that yeah, year three they're still going to be producing. When we're having this conversation again next off season. Christian McCaffrey will be twenty eight point seven years old. So yeah, that's he's gonna be fine. I, I see I'm in that camp. He's I think gonna be fine. I mean there are certain players that you have I mean, we just had Raheem Mostert at thirty one and a half be of the number two fantasy running back. When you're you know, the the age cliff for running backs, when you look at it as a as a totality, it's not fair to the outlier running backs. The the human beings that are first ballot hall of famer like he's better he's more special and he's that way for a reason both genetically and work ethic and mentally and what you know the the whole uh all the ingredients to make the cmc soup uh he will be good <laughs> at 30 is, years which old which is a uh, olympic swimmer and a former nfl player yeah yeah it's a pretty good combo so yeah i mean that is um my mom and dad really let me down <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on them. If my parents should have been in the Olympics. Yeah, and the NFL. I think it's interesting to bring up what you did because, you know, it, it feels like one of those things where some some aspects of fantasy football are right in front of your face. And 
Henry's probably a decent example of this over the last three years. Like the the Henry discussions about Derrick Henry being too old began a while back. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh yeah. It wasn't just last year. I mean, last year was like, and he was fine. I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't Derrick. He wasn't. He wasn't Dar- yeah, no. he was not the Yeti. But like the preceding two or three years, we did that. It was a mistake. We did that with Gore. Obviously, we've done that with a handful of old people. Old people, yeah, <laughs> old people. So this guy turning forty. Um, but yeah, I feel like if you're sitting there and Christian McCaffrey's right in front of your face, and then you're just like, no, I'm gonna just analytics this only because of age and not on anything else. Yeah, in the like, end, what percentage of players? This is where analytics gets funky to me. What percentage of players who have finished the year at number one and done the things that Christian McCaffrey has done in the past two years, drop off the next year. You know, like we don't have enough. Like there in in, a, in 500 years of football, you'd have enough samples of that. But there's only a handful of McCaffreys that have ever played. Mm-hmm. So it's like you don't get to compare him apples to apples. You compare him with inferior players. Yeah, you can't do average running backs yes. and then compare them to the outliers. You just can't do it. It, it, won't, it. it won't make sense. So if you wanted to tell me that you would rather take – CMC over those other running backs for Dynasty. In in the end, what matters and what wins championships are fantasy points scored, and Christian <laughs> McCaffrey will do that. So I don't I don't mind that. that to, the gameplay wise, the wide receivers lifespan, um, and not just lifespan, but perceived dynasty value. You know, four years from now, even if he's near the end, you will you will get tons. You could get a haul for Justin Jefferson. Um, four years from now, you won't get that even for for Brees. Like th- now, all of a sudden, he'll be seen as more of an expiring. He'll be seen asset. as an old asset. Yeah, and so I, I have a hard time pulling that trigger. But if if you're just talking running backs in dynasty, yeah, score fantasy points. Mike, uh, just so you know, I, I can already like picture Mike next year at this on this show, like <laughs> cackling when McCaffrey somehow struggles. But oh, I will not. He's my league of record champion. Guys. Yeah, I need, that, I need him to be good. Yeah, that's true. Um, let me ask you this though, because just to expand the discussion, I think it's a good one on dynasty in general. Like we're talking about short terms, long terms, most total fantasy points over a small period, most over a long period. But you know, the longevity of wide receiver is well known. Like they, that's why they go first. But the importance and value of elite play at running back is also very evident because there's less of them that have the ability yeah. to put a team on on their back and win you a title. I mean, um, that has been proven in redraft, and that you still play the same players in a dynasty league, right? The same amount, generally sure. speaking. You know, two running backs mm-hmm. and two or three wide receivers. So, in that respect, the importance of running back is significant. I just think that's a very interesting kind of value uh, gamble to take. Like I know the long you want to have Jefferson because you want to have an asset that's valuable for ten years, but if, but if, you could trade titles. Yeah, but I will say that while CMC might have slightly higher odds to uh, separate, you could you could also have Jefferson, CD Lamb. This last year is a perfect example. CD Lamb won people titles. Yeah, for when, sure. When you're when you're still the elite of the elite at the wide receiver position, you can go out there and straight up win someone a title. Plus the longevity. What if the best running backs in football are on your dynasty team, but all they can do is get you to the championship game? Then I would call myself Andy Holloway. Yeah, let's say I I I won a championship with pretty subpar. Well, we running were backs. we were actually completely flipped in our two leagues. You yeah, won you, you won with um, McCaffrey, or I'm sorry, I lost with McCaffrey. I won with Lamb. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, no, that's the same, isn't it? Yeah, you both won with wide receivers. All right, never mind. <laughs> God, can we delete the last 10 minutes or so of the pod? You, All right. You know what? I could have won. McCaffrey. <laughs> what did he go out? Halfway through the game. Cheater. Uh, that would be you. You're the cheater. Uh, howdy ho, ballers. What is a good offer for Jalen Waddle and Dynasty? CeeDee Lamb. <laughs> oh, that is a, uh, that is very like, That'll get it done. It'll get done. <laughs> that'll get done. Oh, man. Well. Hmm. Uh, I mean. What? <laughs> Oh man, Waddle, Waddle like is a spear through Jason's heart. Waddle is still an excellent 
player. He's still a great dynasty player. He, I probably not... win the championship this year. Oh, good. I don't know. Hush, hush now, child. I mean, my 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 team, my team is <laughs> was really good. Was in the playoffs. Hush, hush, if, hush. if I had <laughs> Ceedee Lamb, because you know it's true. Hush, child. You hush. guys talked hush, hush, me hush. into losing the championship. Shh, shh, quiet down. Simmer down. Uh, I was gonna like Waddle might be a like a great low target right now. Yeah. Of the this year is weighing very heavily on on how people think about him. We teach people not to blame the fantasy analysts, Jason. <laughs> what about when you're literally sandwiched between them? <laughs> I mean, I guess you just gotta have courage. I guess so. So I'm a weak coward. I think going and get Waddle right now is. I would at least kick the tires. He doesn't feel the same way this offseason as he did last season. So that's generally a good sign if you and that, believe, that's when you swoop in. If you believe in the talent. Uh but a good offer, I mean, it it'll still take a lot. It'll still take a at least someone you can start and then what? Like a, a what would you a, take a right mid? now, Jay? <laughs> Mike Evans. CeeDee Lamb. Mike Evans. I would take him back. <laughs> Give him to me back. No, I would not take Mike Evans. No. No. About, Jalen Waddle's twenty five years old. Adam Thielen. Grayson, <laughs> you're just going through your roster. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I, I think you'd have to have a top five pick. I don't oh. think that's happening. I would not trade Waddle away for a top five. Really? Pick. Wait, I mean, I would trade yes. Waddle away for a top five. Yeah, pick. so you, you would. Prefer I would the prefer top the top five pick. Top five picks. Wow, really, Andy? Waddle. I would definitely what? prefer the the first two. I do, oh, I think I, that's, I go beyond. Yeah, I'll, I wouldn't do that now. I'd have to wait till yeah. fine landing spots. Interesting, but I would in a, in a startup. I would like if if rookies were included. I'd I'd take Malik Neighbor and and Marvin Harrison over Waddle. What was that name again? Neighbors. Malik, Malik Neighbors. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You do have this uh, strange habit of removing or adding S's to people's names. The, the I just there's only one of them, and so this is there's the real hard. Oh, because you know that there's one right human right, and so but his last name is plural. It's plural. Is plural. There's not you. two of them. Hmm. You know. So I'm a home. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That is going to do it for today's show. Coaching changes episode next week, along with our 10 things to remember episode Ooh. on Thursday. You don't want to miss those. Make sure you subscribe. Leave us a review. We'll be back with you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.